Welcome back everyone. Today's video is much anticipated. So the video I posted a few weeks ago uh, labeled $6,000 a week hotshot trucking um, has completely gone haywire. It's got over 300,000 views or something like that. So more than anyone ever expected, more than I ever expected to have on the entire channel, let alone one video. So, but on there, there was a lot of questions and I feel like I answered a lot of questions in the videos, but then you guys turn around and you ask the questions again in the comments. So if you guys are going to watch the video, watch the video all the way through before you ask a question, because chances are I answered it in the video. But for some of those questions, um, I have some note cards here and I'm going to kind of go over everything. So first question is what is hot shot trucking? So hot shot trucking is basically flatbed hauling. You can do it with an enclosed trailer, I believe also. But basically it's just dedicated freight going from one place to another. So stuff that doesn't go through like UPS or FedEx, stuff that's too big or uh, equipment, stuff like that. But semis don't wanna deal with. So it's either a partial load for a semi, something along the line. So it's dedicated freight moving from one location to another location is basically what it is. So the next question is how I got started hot shot trucking. So before I started doing this, I was a foreman running uh, distribution uh, gas lines in Kansas City here. And I just kind of got burnt out with it. I was with the company for almost two years. Um, I was running a crew there. And uh, I already had a three quarter ton. I had a 2017 three quarter ton Dodge. And so, um, Pretty much, I just I did. I just got burnt out on it, and I was on Facebook, and I seen a post on the Facebook Marketplace for a company down in Oklahoma that was offering like anywhere between four or six thousand um, dollars a week for a paycheck, and I seen that, and I was just like, man, I gotta try that out, and so uh, I messaged um, the company and. One thing led to another, and next thing you know, I was doing hot shot trucking. So I already had the truck, and all I needed was a trailer, and they were going to lease me the trailer. So um, it was a win-win situation. So that's how I got started into it. Um, now, the next question is, do you need a CDL? Every single person, I feel like, has asked this question. It depends. I started off hot shot trucking without a CDL. I was running a three quarter ton single wheel um, Dodge 2500. And I was running it with a, I started off with a 36 foot um, gooseneck deck over trailer with two 7,000 pound axles. So you need a CDL with anything under or anything over 26,001 pounds weight rating on the truck and trailer combined. So when I started, my truck was 10,000 pounds GVWR. My trailer was 14,000 pounds GUWR, so I was at 24,000 total. So I did not need a CDL. Now, when I got bumped up to, when I bought my dually, I needed a CDL. So I went to pulling um, my dually with the 48-foot uh, um, air ride trailer that I currently have. And it is a uh, dual tandem axle, so it's rated for 25,000. The truck's rated for 14,000, so it's 39,000. So yes, I needed a CDL. But so it kind of depends. I mean, you can do it without, you can do it with. It I mean, completely up to you. Um, now, the biggest question that I've had asked, which every, I mean, it's, I've probably been asked well over 100 times, is what company I work for. I'm not going to tell you guys that. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, I worked for a, or I work for a smaller company in Oklahoma. We're at 17 drivers, uh, four or five dispatchers. I'm not going to tell you guys that because as my channel grows, it's just going to continue and it's not fair to um, the company owner and the company to sit there and have them have 150 phone calls a day from people off YouTube saying, hey, I seen one of your drivers. I want a job with you guys. When you guys don't have any experience or any of the qualifications or anything like that, like just do some research. So, I mean, you guys just have to go out and you have to find it on your own. There's a lot of companies out there. Just Google some companies, but I'm not gonna flat out tell you guys who I work for because they are a smaller company company, and it's not fair to them. 
Um, the next question is why I picked my truck. So like I said, I had a, um, I had a Dodge 2500 and I put about 60,000 miles on it within, uh, well, it had 20,000 before I started hot shotting. I did another 40,000 within the next few months and I ended up blowing the transmission in it. So, uh, it, it didn't completely blow. I, it, it got to where it was slipping out of sixth gear really, really bad. And so I went and I traded it in and I knew it was time to make the change. I was thinking about getting my CDL anyway. So I went ahead and made the change and I loved the look of the new Fords. They came with uh, the 410 gear ratios that I was wanting. And uh, it just, honestly, it just kind of came down to uh, when I was looking at it, I found the truck that I currently have now and the deal on it was just too much to pass up. I mean, the stuff that it's equipped with, um, it was uh, it was an ordered truck that somebody kind of like custom made and they ordered in and I'm assuming they never picked it up and it went on the lot for uh, a very cheap price and that's I ended, I ended up talking them down with my uh, Ford plan and stuff that I had it was like fifty two thousand dollars and it's got um, it's an SXT package uh, FX4 package so, but it's got the uh, 360 cameras in it, the gooseneck camera, the front cameras. Uh, it's got, I mean, it's got everything in it. It just doesn't have leather or a sunroof. So that's why I picked that truck. Um, next one, how often am I home? Like I said, I already answered that in the other video, um, but I'm still getting asked that all the time. It just kind of depends, you guys. Normally, I mean, I'll go out and I plan on being out two weeks at a time. Because if you don't have to make it back home, like I'm in Missouri right now, the East Coast is the very, it's the hottest spot for flatbed trucking right now. So a lot of times I go out there. So to get back to Missouri, it's kind of difficult. So I'll just bounce up and down on the East Coast for a week and a half at a time. And then they'll start looking me loads back. But if you try to, the guys that are wanting to be home every two or three days, you're not going to make any money because you can't go out there. You can't just find a load one state over and then it's going to bring you back by the house. You won't make any money. So it just kind of depends. Normally I plan on staying out two weeks at a time and then I'm home for a few days. Um, the next one was um, taxes. Uh, like I said, I do set aside 20% for my taxes. Uh, a lot of people were uh, commenting saying that I didn't list it in the video. Um, now the thing is with the taxes, which I learned... Like I said, I bought my truck new, and this year, um, I know with taxes, you can write off um, your vehicles. If you claim commercial, you can write off 50% of your vehicles, I believe it is. And then I even seen another thing where it's saying that if you bought a vehicle new and it's completely commercial use or business use, you can write off an additional 50%, so you can write off the entire purchase of the vehicle for one year. Now, with that, obviously, I'm not... It's going to show this year when I do my taxes uh, with all my expenses and my vehicle write off. It's going to show that I lost money this year. So, yes, I've set away 20% for the entire year, but after I did all the math on that, it doesn't matter. You know, that's all money that I'm getting. So, yes, I stopped setting aside money for taxes um, because I have enough write offs where it's going to show that I went negative this year. And you guys are going to. Um, say, well, you can't do that. The IRS doesn't like that if you go negative so many times. Um, but the thing is, Hot Shot is just a stepping stone for me. And this is what you guys are very soon. I'm going to be re releasing a video um, within the next couple days also um, describing what my next steps are. But um, a lot of the stuff that I did Hot Shot for, um, and people are saying you can't do it in the long run, you'll lose money, this and that. Well, it's just a stepping stone for me because I am going to be getting into a semi which you guys will be seeing very soon. Um, so it was just to get my experience. So that way I'm not starting off with a company getting student pay or getting base pay. You know, I'm coming in um, at experienced pay because I already have so many months or a year of over the road experience. So that was my whole point of getting into hot shotting in the first place. Um, so that covers my taxes and my tax write offs. Uh, my maintenance schedule, and a lot of people said that you need to set um, aside money for repairs for my truck. Well, my truck is covered under warranty until 120,000 miles, so I don't set aside any any money for repairs whatsoever um, because everything is covered front to back. And like I just said, hot shotting was not going to be a long-term thing for me. 
So there's no point in getting repairs. I'm not planning on running this truck for 500,000 miles. Um, so that's why I'm not setting money aside for repairs. You know, um, the truck's got 45,000 miles on it right now. Um, and as you guys are going to quickly see, um, I'm just about done with my hot shotting career. So, um, this was all part of the plan when I was getting my truck. So that's why I haven't been setting aside money for repairs. Um, uh, the other thing is, so that covered my maintenance schedule on it. I do my maintenance schedule cause normally I do over 3000 miles a week. Um, sometimes I'll do, I was, especially when I was first getting started, um, I was really eager wanting to make as much money as possible. Um, I was doing more than that, but, um, I do, I try to stick with my oil changes every 7,500 miles. And then I do my fuel filters every 15,000. So it kind of works out like I would be out two weeks or so. Uh, and then when I come back, I'm going to be close to that 7,500 and then do my oil change. I go out for two more weeks. I come back and it's close to the 15,000. So sometimes I would have to milk it out uh, a fifth week. So like every five weeks I would get my um, filters done along with the oil change. So that's kind of my maintenance schedule on it. Um, every two weeks it normally goes in for maintenance. Um, somebody asked, do I enjoy my take home pay? Um, yes and no. Uh, when you're trying to run, you're out on the road for a purpose. Like I said, this was a, it was kind of more of a short, short term, not a career path. Um, so I'm not too worried about trying to spend my take home pay. I work a lot on the road and when I come back home, like this week, I haven't posted a video. I've been home for almost two weeks now. Uh, well, about a week and a half before I go back out, it'll be almost two weeks straight. So um, I do a lot of time on the road and then every couple months I'll take a week or something off. Um, so yes and no, when I'm on the road, I do not enjoy my take home pay, but that's the point, you know, I'm out on the road trying to save, not sitting there trying to blow all my paycheck. Um, startup cost, um, the startup cost can kind of range. Uh, the company that I work for now is doing uh, investor truck opportunities to where they own the truck and the trailer. They cover absolutely everything. And then you get 25% uh, of the gross that you make that week. Um, so you don't need anything for that. Uh, and I believe some other companies are doing that. Um, but that's something com that my company just started doing that they pay for everything except for your food. Uh, your food or if you do get a hotel, but the trucks are going to be coming with uh, beds in the back, microwave, they're set up pretty much how mine is. Um, so you don't need anything if you go that route, but otherwise, yes, you'll need a truck or you'll need a trailer. It kind of just depends on um, what company you get hooked up with. If you have your own, your own truck and trailer, then there's a lot more opportunities out there. Uh, but startup costs can range. I mean, you guys can go out there and get a truck or some people said that they have a truck that's a few years old that's already paid off and they want to try doing it. That's fine. You can own whatever you want. Um, if you're looking at going out and getting everything new, you're going to have a truck cost, which is $50,000. You're going to have a trailer cost, which is anywhere between fifteen dollars and $20,000. Um, but besides that, your equipment for your binders, your chains, your straps, um, everything along the lines for that. Um, you're looking anywhere between 500 and a thousand dollars depends on what kind of tarps you buy is really going to be your biggest factor um, You get a couple pairs of tarps uh, five or six chains um, Straps everything else like that you're looking at probably twelve to fifteen hundred dollars So I would say that's what your startup cost is is you need to have fifteen hundred um, To get everything you want uh, And then along with that uh, That's that's not counting your truck and trailer. So but that's, that's, again, that's all depends on the company that you guys are looking at getting hooked up with. Um, someone said, why don't I run under my own authority? Well, I just, like I said, I wasn't really looking to do this long term. Uh, there wasn't really any point, you know, I'm trying to, I, when I got started, I didn't know what hot shotting was for the most part either. I didn't know how all the ropes worked. So I can't just go out there and start running under my own authority. I'm not going to make anything. Um, a lot of people say that 20% is a really high number that I pay out for my company, but I didn't feel like it was for the money that I was making. So for me, it just, it wasn't worth the hassle to run under my own authority. Um, another question was, what would I recommend between flatbed versus regular bed and then deleting my truck, which we'll break that down into two different questions. Um, flatbed versus regular bed. 
Uh, absolutely flatbed. I love flatbeds. And with uh, how much stuff I carry in my truck with my 100-gallon uh, fuel tank and I keep my cooler in the back and stuff, I would absolutely love to have a flatbed. Uh, just like I said, the deal that I got on my truck, I just bought my truck um, as is. So it didn't have a flatbed on it, but... Um, if I could, if I had it my way, um, and which I've actually looked into this, adding one on my own, um, I love the look of a flatbed. I think they're so much more useful for what um, the kind of work that I do is. So um, I would absolutely say flatbed 100%. Um, deleting my truck. So someone, it was a long question that they asked about uh, trying to get more fuel maintenance and uh, fuel tanks. It was kind of a broken up question, but. My truck comes factory with a 50 gallon fuel tank, so I didn't really need to stop in the first place very often. I have a 100 gallon um, auxiliary tank also in the bed, so I have 150 gallons worth of fuel, which I've covered in other videos. Um, as with uh, fuel mileage, if you're trying to look at increasing your fuel mileage, you're probably in the wrong industry. I mean, you just gotta accept the fact that your truck's probably gonna get eight miles a gallon, or 10 miles a gallon. And people are sitting there commenting saying that's bad. Well, what do you want to do about it? I mean, it's a factory truck. It just kind of depends on what you're hauling. I mean, if I'm hauling a, a shipping container and I'm 13 feet tall, I'm going to get six or seven miles a gallon. It just you can't do anything about it. So deleting my truck, um, no, I deleted my Dodge. And uh, when I blew the transmission up, it didn't really help with the warranty process on that. Uh, and then also when you're in New Jersey, I know they do smog testing on the emissions. California does it. There's several states that do that. So if you get caught with, uh, with no emissions on your truck, they're going to put you out of service and they're going to fine you an incredible amount of money. So you might as well just throw in the towel at that point. So no, I'm not deleting my truck. Um, at least not until it's out of warranty and then it'd be a, it'd be a tough choice at that point. Um, now someone, Garrett Martyrs, uh, commented on my video, which is probably the stupidest question I've ever seen on a video. Why don't you put your bed set up in the bed of your truck? Have you not, why, I mean, do you know what hot shotting is? I run a gooseneck trailer. Where am I supposed to put a bed? Do you just want me to disconnect my gooseneck and throw a mattress in the back? I mean, you, you guys have to use some common sense and I'm frustrated with some of the comments that I get, but, um, like I said, I have a 100-gallon fuel tank, um, chains, straps, uh, cooler, a uh, gooseneck. I mean, my the bed of my truck is completely full. Um, that's why I have it, my bed set up in the cab. And um, obviously the cab, another question which goes along with it is how I keep my cab climate control. I just run my truck and I set the temperature at what I want. Um, so yeah, my truck runs all day and all night sometimes, but it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, you can't put a bed set up. I know if I was doing RV hauling and you're just doing bumper pulls, you could throw a uh, camper shell on the back of your truck and throw a bed in there, and that would be a great setup. But, obviously, I run a gooseneck trailer, so it's not physically possible. Um, startup cost, uh, take-home pay, leasing versus own authority. Um, owning your own truck. So I think I've pretty much covered everything guys. Um, those are just some of the, the questions that I've gotten over the last couple weeks um, that have really stood out. Um, but yeah, just a brief summary. Um, if you guys are looking to getting in hot shotting, I don't have all the questions um, or all the answers to some of your guys' questions. Um, like one was asking about a DUI and stuff. I don't, I don't know all the specifics to it. Um, so you guys will just have to do your own research. That's what I did. Um, if I had a question, I just researched the heck out of it. So I'm here to try to answer as many as I can, and I hope I've gave you guys some insights on it. But uh, at the same time, I don't have all the answers, and I have a life outside of uh, YouTube also, so I can't get back to everyone's questions. So before you guys leave a question on my video, just scroll down a little bit. Take 30 seconds out of your day and see if somebody else has already asked that exact same question and they'll have your answer. And vice versa, if you see someone that's asking a question, like simple questions like, do you need a CDL or this or that, and you already know the answer, why don't you just go ahead and leave the, the comment um, for them? So, because I can't answer everyone's questions, I don't get notifications for all of them. And especially when I have a video that goes up to 300,000 views and I have a thousand uh, comments and stuff on it. I can't I can't get to all that um, I don't have the time for it. So 
Um, if you guys, what, what, what do you guys want to see next? Um, like I said, I'll be posting a video, uh, sometime this week telling you guys what's next for me. Um, because my hotshot journey is coming to a very quick end and I'm excited to show you guys what's next on the list. But, uh, thanks for all the support. My channel is already at like 6,500 subscribers, so it's gone well above and beyond anything I could hope for at this point. So let's just keep growing that channel and let's go ahead and make it up to 10,000. And um, thanks for the support. Go ahead and subscribe and like to the channel and uh, have a good weekend or have a good week whenever you guys are watching this.